So I haven't been out fishing in a couple weeks because of my uh, elbow issue. Getting that sorted out now and more on that on at the end of this video. But I finally made it out today. Thought I'd take a minute on this lake to do a pitching video. I know I've gone over this a little bit in the past, but I want to do a deeper dive on pitching. First off, let's start with the gear. So this is a seven foot, seven inch, medium heavy rod. Depending on the thickness of the vegetation that you're going to be pitching, medium heavy can work just fine, especially in a longer length but you might want to up to a heavy and the reason is it's compounding force fighting a bass is one thing you hook a bass throwing a spinner bait or something and you set the hook and that bass is exerting a certain amount of force against your equipment trying to get loose <laughs> That force is compounded when you mix in things like dock pilings, laydowns, branches, vegetation. And when it comes to pitching, you are going to be targeting thick vegetation, heavy lily pad fields, matted grass, things like that. So instantaneously, you're giving the bass a advantage. You're giving them more of an opportunity to get rid of your bait and to shake loose before you ever even get a chance to see them sometimes. The second you hook into a a bass that thing is going to start hooking around lily pad stems and it's going to start trying to dig down in and get down into that grass and just get rid of whatever's got a hold of it the equipment becomes very paramount and not just what you're using for equipment but how you're utilizing your equipment so i want to get into that because realistically as soon as these lily pads break the surface pitching is a viable option and it can just be lethal especially for you bank anglers if you're relegated to fish in the bank this technique uh, you can just pick cover apart so good and it can be such a subtle technique that it just allows you to really methodically pick over an area medium heavy is the seven foot seven inch you might want to go with a heavy it's going to depend on your application but I've been good with this medium heavy in pretty much everything I put it through. So heavy would be nice, but it kind of limits that rod to maybe you'll throw top water on it. Where with this being a medium heavy, I could crankbait fish this if I really wanted to. Deep diving crankbaits, I could throw swim jigs, spinner baits. I can throw just about anything I want on it because it's not that overpowering stiff rod uh, that a heavy would be. It, personal preference, but I recommend at the minimum a medium heavy seven foot five five to seven foot seven seven eleven inch rod next is going to be your reel and this is a cheapo i mean this is a 120 dollar bass pro reel that i threw on here because like an idiot i decided to sell one of my shimanos and i'll never do that again but this is a higher speed reel so 7.6 to 1 and the only reason being is when you set the hook on these fish when you make your pitch when you set that hook you have to be able to drop the rod tip back down you got to catch up on that line really fast and continue to winch them out. When you're fishing this technique, you want the rod to do the majority of the work. The only thing the reel is there is to gain line back so you can keep, continue to winch that fish out of the vegetation. Once they're clear of the vegetation, then the reel comes more into play. If you're blowing reels out trying to do this, you're doing it wrong. You just want to nail them, get that rod to load up and just winch those things out and then use the reel just to catch back up while you re-engage the rod as long as you're keeping a good bend in there you shouldn't have too many problems losing them this is one of those techniques and one of those types of fishing where you're going to lose fish it's just the way it is nice you could hook and land every single one of them but there's so many things to their advantage in doing this that you're just going to lose fish at times but you know you get to hook them and have fun for a minute and it's still exciting so that's cool your line you can do this with 30 pound braid 40 pound braid 50 pound braid it will work you will have breakage issues with anything under 50 pounds that's been my finding 65 pound or 80 pound braid you're not going to have breakage issues and that line is going to be more conducive to cutting through vegetation than getting wrapped around the vegetation if you're hooked up on a good fish that tension is going to turn this into a little saw blade and you're just going to be snapping lily pads off for guys that are used to fishing 8 and 10 pound monofilament talking about 65 pound braid <laughs> is something to adjust to but try Trust me, it's just what it takes to get the job done. It's not an attack on your manhood by any means. You want to come up here and throw a 10 pound test into these pads and try a horse out of five pounder. You, not only are you going to be disappointed, but you're going to leave lures in the fish's mouth and it's just not fair to the animals. Just set yourself up right. Have one rig up 
for doing stuff like this and you're good and you know you can still use all this same equipment for top water throwing buzz baits big frogs and stuff like that it can still be a versatile uh, setup you just want to make sure that it's set up correctly for the type of application lastly in the equipment side is going to be your hook your weight and then whatever bait you choose and these things can vary so much you can go with something like a rage that kicks a lot you can go with something that's you know just basically almost like a pencil bait There's really no limit to what you can do it just depends on how much action you want out of those legs your weight i try to go with the least amount of weight possible to get through the vegetation so that could be in this instance a half ounce it could be a three quarter ounce a one one and a half one and a quarter two ounce three ounce i mean it really depends on how thick of stuff you're fishing so but for lily pad fields i'll either go half ounce or i'll go one ounce i don't want to run the risk of baits getting hung up on the pads and hung up in the grass and not being able to pull my line down through to get down in there so half ounce uh three quarter ounce one ounce that's usually where i live when i'm doing pads once you get into august even late september uh you still got really thick grass and low water and those two combined compress that grass and that's going to make that whole thing denser and diff more difficult to get through so you're going to want to up those weights it's not about how fast your bait falls it's just about getting your bait through the vegetation but this quickly became one of my just absolute favorite ways to do this this is close quarter combat fishing trolling motor on a lower speed the lowest speed that you can get away with all electronics off i didn't even take my graph covers off today i know i'm going to be pitching pads and i don't need electronics to tell me that there's lily pads right there so they're really unnecessary right now so another great thing about this technique is if you're a bank angler or you're just in a kayak or you're out in your little john boat or something and you don't have electronics to do this you don't need electronics if there's lily pads or reeds or some type of shoreline grass or submergent grass you're in business it is nice if you can find hard bottom areas in some of this stuff and it's also nice if you know if there's any kind of logs or compounding cover but i'll go over that in a minute another key important feature is ballistic eyewear <laughs> <laughs> because these fish will jump on this bait and you, you'll feel it and you set that hook and this freaking rig comes flying out of them lily pads at Mach 1. You just want to make sure you cover and protect your eyes. This is not something where you want to be taking a hook. Now, I've been hit by these things. I can't even count how many times, but fortunately nothing major as far as penetration into my skin or face. Yeah, these things will uh, come out of those lily pads awfully fast. So your basic technique on this is get your bait back kind of basically even with the reel and then just letting the weight of the baits pendulum out you just kind of swing it out and when it does you're just releasing this enough you want to drag your thumb on that spool just to let that thing kind of glide right over the surface as you're doing this motion keep that rod tip going up it's going to help one slow down your presentation so you get a quieter entry into the water and two when your rod tips high at the end of that pitch when that bait hits the surface of the water now you can follow it down with your rod tip and be ready a lot of times these fish will take this bait on the sink if it gets to the bottom and you got to bring it up and down a couple times maybe they're a little less active still you're going to be in a position to set the hook and uh, get them out of there so just a nice sweeping motion and then when that bait hits Drop that rod tip to follow it down. Even if it's only a couple feet of water, that's important. So just a nice sweep out, stopping with your thumb, engage the reel, and then start feeling for fish. See how that vegetation makes a point? Here you got some weird stuff out at the end of that green grass. Back there's a little hole back in there that doesn't look like nothing. Just look for anything kind of different or anywhere where that there's a compounding cover. So here I've got an old lily pad root next to these reeds. And that's all stuff that could be just a little bit higher percentage as in they're a little bit more apt that there might be a fish laying there. Okay, now what I'm going to look for in these pads... It's just anywhere there's a gap, you know, and I like the smaller gap, the better personally, but I'm gonna let that get to the bottom. Just give it a little bit of movement and it doesn't take long. You're it's you're in and you're out. These fish are either going to grab it or they're not. You don't got to sit there and wait all day. So I'm going to hop it three or four times, maybe let it sit for a second. And then that thing's coming out of there and I'm off to the next spot. Four or five hops. 
So you're moving along fairly steadily as far as the trolling motor. Another thing to keep in mind also, if you look at this lily pad field right ahead of us, look at the fish moving on the outside. You want to be watching for activity. Fish moving, if you're spooking fish, where did they spook from? Were they towards the shore closer? Were they out towards the edge of the pads? Were they in the middle? That's all things that you need to determine. While I'm doing this, even though I'm watching my target, I'm watching where my bait's going, I'm also looking out a circle around that, probably a good, you know, five feet to look for pads shaking, rings in the water like what's going on up here. Looks like the... Uh, Look like the pumpkin seeds are getting pretty active. That is all stuff that can get you clued into bites. You know, another thing, I'm throwing this black and blue right now, but with the amount of pumpkin seed action that's going on, I might switch over to something that looks a little bit more like a pumpkin seed, getting something a little bit more brown and tan. Probably why they're not biting. They got their bellies full of pumpkin seeds. You know, the bigger fish, when they're in amongst them pad stems, they got to move around or just bump into them. It doesn't mean you're spooking them. It just means that they're moving. Gives away their position a little bit. You know, another thing about running this braided line is no stretch. So you're going to detect that strike instantly. You're going to pick up on movement if a fish just picks it up. Maybe they're not being real aggressive. But no stretch. When you set the hook, that fish is coming your way. And that's what you want. You got to get them clear of this stuff as quick as possible. But detecting strikes is paramount. When you've got braided line on there with no stretch, that bait, even if it's sinking on a slack line, you're going to feel a fish grab it. You're going to feel that thunk. So even though there's no lily pads right through here, what I'm doing is this is a floating bank. The fish can be up underneath this. So I'm just trying to get in as tight as possible to the edge. And same thing, just up and down a couple times and then I'm moving to the next spot. Once you kind of get in a rhythm, because you're going to do this hundreds of times. But once you kind of get in a rhythm, you don't even really have to grab your bait anymore. You just kind of, you're just swinging it. Just kick it out there, let it sink in the water. It's very basic. As long as you got the right equipment, it's very basic and it can be just very freaking deadly and it's a lot of fun a lot of times the quieter you can get that bait in the water the better but once frogs get really active i kind of don't worry about it as much because when the frogs jump off the bank when they're startled they're not worried about if they make noise or not they just jump in and it makes kind of a splash so i haven't noticed it if I'm hearing a lot of frog activity, which I'm not this morning, I won't worry if my bait splashes. I don't necessarily want it to, but if it does, I'm not going to panic or worry about it. And you might notice sometimes, which I have, is sometimes that splash is actually good. You can see a fish move off to the side and then, then it comes over towards your line and just hang on because chaos is about to ensue. A little guy. Finally. Okay, one thing about braided line, if you catch a small fish or even snag, that braid is going to dig down in there. Don't try to make another presentation because you're going to be all messed up. Just make a cast kind of out into open water and get that to clear or your next pitch it's going to hit that spot and stop and it can really mess everything up i just got hung up i noticed that my keeper my bait keeper on this hook is broke so it gives me an opportunity to retie get rid of this hook i'll go through that process four aught is about the most common size that you're going to throw in a hook you may have to go up to a five aught six aught it just depends on the bulk of the bait that you're throwing but a four aught will get you through just about everything for the entire rig and i'll do this quick because i've gone over it before is two to three bobber stops i will run two on anything half ounce three quarter ounce if i go above that i'll run three because they'll that braid will start to burn through them and they'll fall off and then you want your weight or in this case this slither rig uh you're going to tie your hook on with a snell knot so on a snell knot coming from the point side of the hook go through the side wash pull some line through and then just grab that line keeping your finger down there wrap this about 10 times and then that loop that you originally made, just take your tag in back through it. I 
and then cinch that down pulling the main line let that slide up the shank make sure you get it up and over your bait keeper and then i like to take a pair of pliers get a good grip on just cinch that sucker down real good get that cinched good and then cut that tag end off and you're done now from a bait today i'm throwing these rage tails and predominantly i throw rage tails just because i like them definitely use whatever bait you like i think these baits can emulate a lot of different forage in the pads even though this has a crawfish vibe to it it can look like a bluegill it can look like a pumpkin seed it can act like a frog you get a lot of bang for your buck out of these so you know the bass can think it's many different types of forage. A lot of times on these, that color can really come in because if a dark bait like your traditional black and blue isn't working, I'll go to something a little more natural looking. And typically it's one of those two colors is gonna produce. Uh, as far as winding these on, you just go through enough of the meat of the bait to get past your keeper. And then when you hook these, line it up slide it forward and then bring that hook in until you feel it right under the skin of that bait and you're ready to go cinch everything down and you're fishing you know from a condition standpoint for doing this i don't like this overcast i like high bright sunny days uh, when it's overcast like this those bass will typically get out more towards the end edge of the pads versus be really hunkered up in them same thing with grass they'll get move out a little bit more towards the edge of the grass than to be really bowed up in it you get those high bright summer days that's when the best time to be doing this you got to deal with bees and stuff like that but trade-off is worth it because you want them seeking out that cooler shady water when it's cool and overcast like this or even raining they're going to be a little bit more active a little bit more out on the edges of stuff and this isn't really the the go-to technique it's still works you know it's definitely fish around but it's mainly because of time of year they're spawning so they're up a little bit shallower i'm just running into little males so in the summer when they're up there for that cooler water and in the shade so is a lot of the forage and uh, that's when this technique is just is so much fun so one question you might ask is why can't i just do that same stuff with a jig and theoretically you can the technical answer is because this whole compact slippery bait will penetrate vegetation better than that bulky weed guard and that exposed hook you are going to fight that even though that weed guard exists on a jig you're gonna fight that I can't even tell you how much in the thicker vegetation if you're just around wood or you're just flipping edges the jig will work fine you can get away with that but when you start to go into the heart of this stuff and into thicker grass and into uh, the thicker pads and all that. This whole rig just slips through it so much easier. It comes out so much nicer. You're not going to get hung up nearly as much. The worst thing that happens is sometimes your weight will get into a little V of the back of a lily pad and you just let off and pick it up a couple times and it'll pop right out of that. As long as your hook is buried, you can throw this into literally anything and still get the fish back out. These things, I mean, without a question, have their place, but fishing thick, thick grass and the thicker pads like this, they're just at a bit of a disadvantage. It is important to run more of a, of a pitching rig uh, than a jig in and around this stuff. It can work, a jig can work. I did it for a long time. For your own peace of mind and for the amount of cover variations that you can get into and out of with the pitching rig is just way ahead of the game if you just go with the pitching rig. I mean, you can see right there, I've got both tied up, ready to go in, into thick stuff. This just makes that much more sense. That that's why I have both tied up because there are places where this is just gonna outperform a jig. So the only other advice I can really give you if you wanna do this, if you're using it and you're going through some good looking stuff and nothing's happened in say an hour, go ahead and change colors. Uh, black, dark color, go with something more neutral, natural color like your, your browns and light tans and even with a little bit of orange in there, looks like maybe a little pumpkin seed. And then maybe go over to something bright if you're in dirty water, you can go with white, uh, white and chartreuse and just mix it up and see if you start getting action from the fish. If the fish start to fire on it, then you know it's a color issue. If you go through a couple colors and you really nothing's happening then you're on the wrong technique and it's time to change it up for the day 
the number one thing today is I wanted more of that sun and less of this overcast and it's still early in the morning so I'm gonna go back to reaction baits just let this rest until if that sun pops out with the calm conditions I start getting sun on the water then I will start throwing this again later midday this thing probably the number one thing that I'll go with but right now I just see so much fish activity on the outside edge of these pads I want to kind of capitalize on it so that's it I'm gonna get back to fishing Saw that fish boil right off the front of the boat. Oh my goodness. Good strike.